I get a phone call from a friend of mine. Her name is Mary Ann Bridgewater. Many people know her very well in the Houston area. She's a, she's a prayer warrior. She, she calls me while I'm sitting on the bench in my doctor's office and I see it's Mary Ann and I haven't talked to her in five years. I said, let me just let her know I'll call her back. And she says, I got something I need to tell you. If the doctor comes in, just hang up, okay? I said, okay, great. She says, the Lord just spoke to me and said to call Ricky and tell him to call my pastors back to me. Now, Ricky, I don't know what that looks like, but it looks like Reliance Stadium to me. Let me know what I can do to help. I say, Marianne, do you know where I am right now? I'm in my doctor's office because of this aorta dissection. And she shouts. And ever since then, I've been calling pastors to come to meetings to hear the testimony of what God has done in my heart and then lead them to understand that they need to return to the Lord quickly. Since then, I uh, have spoken to pastors in Missouri City across uh, denominational lines. Uh, uh, one of them was an Anglican bishop. Um, I've gone to Texas A&M, the museum. Pastors were there. They prostrated themselves on the floor. I've gone to KSBJ where I was employed. We had pastors come for four weeks to the auditorium at KSBJ, repenting from all across the city. And even at that, I've gone to Alexandria, Louisiana, to a Baptist church that invited me to come because they heard the story. And pastors were sitting in the back row, he and his wife. They all came to the altar to repent. And since then, I've come to churches here in Houston. And many of the pastors have repented and led their congregations where thousands would run to the altar crying unto the Lord. And there's healings and miracles and wonders and signs are taking place in these congregations. God affirming his approval of their returning to him because the, the pastor confessed his sin. I've gone to the Houston Church Planners Network with the message, thinking that when I confess my sin publicly to them, they would not want to even talk to me anymore. But yet that day, the chairman and many others started grabbing the microphone one by one, confessing sins of the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That went on for over an hour, one by one, confessing sin. Felt like an hour to me. And out of that came a, a desire to take it to the Houston Police Officers Union, where there's a 24-7 altar there. They said, can you come? So we went to the fourth floor where there was windows looking up to downtown Houston. And pastors from all over the city and intercessors came to repent and to cry out to the Lord between the porch and the altar, weeping on the floor, flat on their faces. And then all of a sudden, the Union Baptist Association has asked us to come to the conference room. And so the last four weeks of my life has been in that conference room with pastors and intercessors weeping. So what does this mean? Is this the great revival? Is this where God will do something through Houston that we can't do by ourselves? That it will take the body of Christ coming together? but it begins with the hearts of pastors crying out to him? I believe, I believe so. I believe he says, if you repent, if you return to me, redo that what you did at first, and remember the height from which you've fallen, I will let you eat from the tree that is in paradise. That doesn't mean you're gonna to go to heaven and then eat of it. No, 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 I'm letting the tree come down and you can eat from it. He also says to the church in Laodicea, if you would just open the door, who's he talking to? He's talking to the messengers, the angels. Open the door. They got the keys to open the door from the pulpit. Confess your sins and invite them to join you. I will dine with you and you will dine with me, saith the Lord. But if you do not, I will vomit you out of my mouth. But if you do, I will let you sit on the throne that my father let me sit on. You know what that means? You don't go to heaven to get that. Heaven comes to you and allows you to sit on that throne. But it begins with me opening the door. It begins with me returning to my first love. It begins with us pastors, Methodists and Baptists and Charismatics, Pentecostals. They're coming into the upper rooms, the 120, on their faces before God. And may he pour his spirit upon his church May he pour his spirit upon the lostness in our city. 
like he did in the second, or should I say, the Pentecost movement of the first century. It's when the body of Christ went up to the upper room and stayed there, crying out to the Lord to come, come with power. I'm sure Peter repented in that meeting. I'm sure Philip did too. I'm sure many of them repented because they didn't go to the cross. And out of their repentance came an outpouring of the kingdom of God that we only read about. Not only can we believe, but we need to imagine the tree coming down. We need to imagine that when we open the door and let him in, he would dine with us. That's revival. In the wake of great judgment, 